thanks for coming back for another review guys today I have the Google Pixel book on the left and the MacBook Pro on the right both of them are the base models I just wanted to do a quick comparison they're pretty close in price range um, depending upon where you shop and so I wanted to see kind of what you get for your money so let's get into it all right so taking a look at the keyboards and trackpads here these are where the two computers differ quite a bit Starting with the Google Pixel Book, we have the soft silicone rubber, or uh, I believe it's rubber. I can't tell you for sure, but it's just, it feels great on your palms. It feels great just to touch, to be honest with you. It's just soft, it's smooth, it's not sticky like a rubber. It feels great. The, key, the keypad, or the, I'm sorry, the trackpad is glass. It's a little bit recessed in here, so you can tell if you're not looking at the trackpad when you're scrolling, you can tell when you reach the edges. The trackpad itself is one of the best I've ever used. Between the Mac and the uh, Pixelbook here, probably the two best trackpads on the market. And I actually prefer the, the Pixelbook just a little bit more. I think it's just a little bit more responsive. For the keyboard, it's, a, again, extremely nice key, keyboard in my opinion. Uh, it has more travel than the MacBook, but not quite as much as some of the other Windows laptops you might see. And I'll just type a little bit so you can kind of hear. It gives a very nice clicky response. The keys themselves, I believe they're, I'm not sure if they're plastic. They, they feel soft, um, kind of soft touch, almost like this rubber right here, but not quite as rubbery. I, again, I, I can't really explain it besides saying that they feel great. So I'll just type a little bit so you can kind of hear it. So you can kind of hear the kind of the clickiness to them. Definitely not quite as clicky as the MacBook, but they do give a kind of a very satisfying response to them. Um, this is honestly one of my favorite keyboards and trackpads out there, and I've tried quite a few computers. The uh, trackpad is a little bit clicky. You can hear that. But honestly, I just do the, the touch to uh, select uh, method so I don't actually you don't have to press down unless you're highlighting or selecting something um, you can just tap on it like that and um, you can uh, click using that method so for the MacBook you have a extremely large touchpad here um, probably the biggest one I've ever seen on any laptop especially for a 13.3 inch I like it. I think it's great. It's nice to have that uh, extra width to kind of get across the screen. It's very responsive. Like I said, these are two of the best you can find. The key, the keyboard itself, um, you might have you know, read reviews. Some people like it. Some people hate it. I personally like it. It's very you know flat keyboard, little travel. The butterfly switches give a great clicky response letting you know that you hit the key. So for instance, I'll just type a little bit on here. All right, in terms of display, um, they're both very good displays. I will say that uh, the MacBook has a little bit brighter if you go to 100%. I believe these are both 100% right now. Let's double check that. Yep, they both are 100%. And my camera might not do it justice, but the MacBook Pro is just a little bit brighter. In terms of resolution, they're both amazing. Um, the Google Pixelbook, I think, is 2400 by 1600 and the MacBook Pro has the Retina display. The Google Pixelbook has a smaller display with quite large bezels, as you can see. The display on the Google Pixelbook is 12.3 inch, and on the MacBook it's 13.3 inch with the smaller bezels. And they say the, the bigger bezels on the Google Pixelbook is to hold it better when it's in tablet mode. Um, for me, I still think they could have shrunk them a little bit, and still it would have been fine, but I can understand where they're coming from on that side. So in terms of hardware, I think most would agree that these are two of the best built 
laptops on the market right now. Build quality is top notch. There's no wiggly keys. There's no bad trackpads. Displays are amazing. So in terms of hardware, you can't go wrong with either one of these. In terms of software, this is gonna be the kind of the kicker for most people because uh, on the Chromebook, you have Chrome OS. MacBook has obviously Mac OS. And some people might need a little bit more heavy duty software like Mac OS has. Chrome OS has come a long way in the last couple of years and now has the Android uh, or Google Play Store on it so you can get Android apps on it. Some of those apps work well, some of them aren't optimized for a laptop experience. So kind of built, uh, stuck with a five inch um, version of that app on your 12.3 inch screen, which is kind of weird, but I've been using the Pixel Book for about a month and a half now, and I've kind of have it really optimized for how I use it and how uh, I work and um, use it for personal use and that sort of thing. And it really is just kind of figuring out which apps work best for you because you can either get the web-based applications that come on all Chromebooks or you can download the app, app from the Google Play Store and use the Android version. And it's really kind of figuring out which one you like best. On the Mac, you have that kind of the cohesive software hardware, um, a little bit more uh, plug and play, take it out of the box and it's ready to go. Um, quickly download things from the App Store and it's you know working right then. It's not quite as much figuring out which one works best for you. So if you're looking for something, like I said, to take right out of the box um, and use and not have to really fiddle with which applications you want to use, the Mac is going to be your best choice. Once you get the Pixelbook figured out and you have the app set up the way you want, I will say that comparing these two is very tough. Um, and I just wanted to kind of pull up a few applications from both uh, the Pixelbook and, and the MacBook Pro, just so you can see the, the speed at which they load. I can kind of um, save you the suspense and tell you that these both are very fast machines. But, you know, for, uh, for fun, I'll just start loading some things so you can kind of see. First, I'll load up Slack because I use that for work. And you'll see on the Pixelbook, and I don't want to make this too long, but you'll see on the Pixelbook that some of these will pull up the web-based versions of the, the application, and some of them will be the actual Android application. It's just what I've figured out works best for, for my usage. So um, let's just click on these at the same time. All right, so you can kind of see when it pulls up the web-based application like that, it's going to be a little bit faster than the MacBook loading uh, the app from the, the Mac store. All right, so let's load up a Chrome tab here. Obviously, this should be faster on a Chrome OS device, but just let's just ch check it out quick. Both are very speedy. Obviously, something running, running Chrome OS, I would expect to be faster loading up Chrome. Um, but let's just kind of jump around from a few um, different sites here. So we'll do this one. All right, so I'm gonna load up Trello here. So the Trello I have on my Pixelbook is gonna be the uh, Google Play Store version. So it's an act the actual app, not the web-based version. And I'll pull it up in the MacBook as well. One, two, three. All right, so you can see on the Pixelbook, it was quite, quite a bit faster. 
right now I'll just load up a, a Microsoft Word really quick. And you can see again this loads faster because it's a, a web-based application rather than an actual app like the MacBook Pro has. Just a quick boot up test. I have both of these powered down right now. I just want to see which one gets to the login screen faster. So the Pixelbook power button is on the side here and the MacBook has a power button right on the keyboard. So I'll press them at the same time. One, two, three. It's like MacBook by about a second there. All right, so I'm not gonna do a Geekbench score on these devices or anything like that. My reviews are more geared towards getting the device in my hands, using it for what I need it for, and seeing which one performs the best. And honestly, that's what anyone should do when they're considering buying a $1,000 plus laptop. Um, these are both great laptops. There's, I, I don't think there's a clear winner um, it really depends on what you're going to be using it for. Overall, guys, two great computers. I'm sorry that I can't give you a definitive answer on which one's better because they're both uh, awesome, in my opinion. Like I said, it's going to boil down to how you use them and what kind of uh, preferences you have in terms of build quality and hardware. So, um, But I hope this gives you a little bit better idea which one might be best for you. Appreciate you guys watching. Uh, if you like it, please press that like button. Subscribe for more uh, videos. I'm going to hopefully uh, get some more computers and tech and just things I use around uh, my house and in my life to, to review. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you on the next video.